The Hattem Magnetic Flywheel Leon Raoul Hattem is a French philosopher and inventor born in Paris in 1922. He is the author of philosophical and scientific books. From the age of 13, he began to question Newtonian gravity and how it was supposed to govern planetary systems. In 1955, he discovered a phenomenon which he calls degravitation, where he claims there is a release of the attraction poles of two magnets simultaneously away from each other by their own kinetic action. His observations showed that under certain conditions, rotating, synchronized, magnetically attracted bodies began to receive additional impulse from an external source when spun beyond a certain RPM, revolutions per minute. This led him to conclude that gravity was a result of magnetic functions and contends that this effect can be used to understand all movements in all planetary and atomic functions. Basically, only magnetism is required for operation of the universe and all other visible forces arising. This sounds similar to the electric universe theory, but the idea is that electromagnetism or magnetism in this case plays a much larger role in our universe than what is being considered. Now to prove this, he also had some devices that he developed and patented in these decades. The one that's been replicated online is the Hattem flywheel. If you type this in the Google search, you're going to find all kinds of replications. Some will claim unsuccessful replication, and there are a few that seem successful, but it seems very thorough. I ran across a video clip of a Frenchman in the Alps who had one in demonstration in front of a TV camera. If you do your research into this technology, you're going to run across some interesting links. Hattem's two published patents describe implementation of his flywheel idea. There are two magnetically coupled flywheels that are put together and spun beyond a certain speed. You can have them coupled to a generator or an alternator, and they start to generate more output power than what was taken to initially set them in motion. With this kind of technology, you'll find that these systems do require energy to get them started. But once it's set in motion, you're going to have an output that's much larger than the input required to keep the system running. This is because of inertia. Once you get something in oscillation, it has enough energy to keep it going. An analogy for this concept is like the merry-go-round at a park. When you push it around initially, it takes quite a bit of force to get the whole thing turning. But once it's turning, all you need is a little tap with your fingers to keep it going. This is the same concept that keeps the earth spinning. Notice how the earth does not need to be plugged into a cosmic wall socket hooked up to fossil fuels somewhere. There are other ways to create energy. In doing this research, there seems to be a lot of these mechanical devices that incorporate a flywheel. Some of these devices don't have the flywheel. Instead, they might have weighted wheels where a weight is swinging during the cycle. So we're talking about using a combination of flywheels and that is kinetic energy. When you start talking about swinging weights, now you start getting into oscillations and secondary oscillations. In the book, we have a photo of a flywheel embodiment. Not just a flywheel, but magnetic coupled flywheels. When you look at them, they also look like gears. So now you have this gearing function, but more than that, it's the attraction of the magnets that help assist and give it the effect that we're talking about. The blue motor is what's used to turn alternators which are connected in line through their magnetic coupling. The claim is, when you power up this DC motor with a magnetic flywheel, alternators turn, but not at a loss in the system. You actually get a gain, and the alternator is spinning with the same output out as the alternator at the front. This is a way of running it in efficiency. In the book, there are two pictures of two independent replications of this technology. One of these replications, they didn't even know who the French philosopher was. In his spare time, he built a similar thing and got the same results. The Hutchison Effect John Hutchison is a Canadian inventor who in 1979 discovered the Hutchison Effect. When John's Tesla coils, electrostatic generator, and other equipment created a complex electromagnetic field, Heavy pieces of metal levitated and shot toward the ceiling, and some pieces shredded. Upon analysis and thorough investigation, the Canadian government dubbed this phenomenon the Hutchison Effect. The Hutchison Effect happens when complex high-voltage electromagnetic and electrostatic fields 
combined in a region of space as to create anomalous effects on materials within. Effects observed include inertial levitation, transmutation, jellification, and embrittlement of metals. While the effects of Hutchison's experiments are intriguing, it is unsure if anyone has been able to successfully replicate them. One of the only things that comes close to replicating some of these effects are the effects on the steel from the World Trade Center on 9-11. Dr. Judy Wood's book fully explains the exotic nature of this phenomenon. The authors of this book feel that it is important to mention that a dramatic change has been witnessed in the demeanor of Mr. Hutchison. We suspect that perhaps someone got to him, which is all we can think of to explain his bizarre behavior. We cannot say for sure, but it certainly would fall in line with many of the tactics we've mentioned in this book as a way to discredit a target and therefore discredit his technology. In the book, we have several pictures of some of the fascinating Hutchison effects on metal.